what we're going to specifically go into today is our corporate wealth escalator plan, our CWEP, if you've heard, heard us uh, sort of use that phrase uh, now and again. Uh, the corporate wealth escalator plan uses corporately, uh, corporate owned participating life insurance, and that's in order to significantly increase the value of the shareholders estate. Uh, the strategy, um, the strategy illustrates how participating life insurance can generate a greater estate value with surplus earnings as it compared to a taxable investment. So if you were to take this, the funds instead of buying the, the par or life insurance, what would it look like alternatively? Uh, so as I said, there's going to be two parts to the presentation. So we're going to talk about some of the opportunities, um, how you can diversify some assets, and then of course we'll, we'll do um, a case study. So before we get into our presentation, we have our standard disclaimer. Uh, I'm gonna read it very quickly here. The following information is being presented on the understanding that it is intended for information purposes only. None of the presenters or Desjardins insurance has been engaged for the purpose of providing legal taxation or other professional advice. No one should act upon the examples of information without a thorough examination of legal tax situation with the appropriate professional advisors. So please, if you are not a tax uh, specialist, please ensure that you talk to a tax specialist if you're doing some of this stuff for your client. Okay. So um, uh, essentially what we're gonna be talking about is creating wealth um, uh, for business. Okay, in a nutshell here. All right. So as I said, uh, our agenda is going to start with understanding the corporate wealth escalator plan. So what does the CWIP look like? Uh, we'll follow into a case study. And then, of course, we have a summary at the end. Uh, if you have questions along the way, please feel free to enter them into the chat. Uh, we will absolutely be addressing them at the end of the presentation. All right. So a corporate wealth creation strategy is um, a way to maximize uh, the value of an estate. Um, it offers a tax efficient way to redirect funds that are held within uh, taxable investments to purchase life insurance. Tax efficient solution, it allows you to ensure that your assets, again, as I said, are transferred in a tax free manner. All right. Who is the wealth uh, escalator for? Uh, so really, before you start talking to your clients about the CWEP, we want to make sure that it is something that is applicable to them. So we want to make sure, do, do you have clients that are shareholders of a private um, Canadian corporation? Okay, so is it a Canadian corporation? Uh, do they have a corporation that generates a surplus of profits? Um, profits, these, this is going to be money that's not really needed in that day-to-day, -day, um, money that's going to be reinvested into uh, an investment portfolio, perhaps, and it doesn't necessarily need to be reinvested into the business. Uh, these are people who do require life insurance and also people who are in good health. We want to make sure we can actually do the solution for, for your client. Uh, so, um, you know, ask your clients some of the following questions. You know, we always want to remember that company need has to come first. We need to make sure that there is an insurance need, of course. Um, so again, are you a shareholder of a private Canadian corporation? Are you looking to diversify your corporate uh, investments? We're going to talk about a little bit of passive income uh, later on in the presentation. Uh, so, uh, you know, that'll be sort of an added uh, discussion on diversifying corporate investments. Do you want to reduce your corporate taxes on investment income? Again, we're going to talk about a little passive income there. And are you concerned about the erosion of your corporate assets? Uh, and last, are you interested in leaving assets to your heirs? Okay, so do you have beneficiaries that we're looking for? So, of course, if the answer is yes, then the corporate wealth escalator plan might be appropriate for your client. Okay, so um, we're going to talk a little bit about the limitations of uh, some of traditional investments, uh, some taxable investments that are owned by the corporation. We really need to understand uh, what that taxation looks like and how tax really affects a uh, corporation. So as, as we, we know, the business makes money in two main ways, okay, selling products or services and investing cash on hand. Uh, so one is considered active income, and the latter, of course, is considered passive income. 
If it is determined that the income generated from investing the surplus cash is not incidental to your business, it would be taxed as passive investment income. Again, why is this important for us to know? Um, you know, there have been some changes to uh, the way income is treated inside of a corporation. And so uh, this uh, corporate wealth escalator plan has become more and more uh, important uh, when we're talking to business owners. There's sort of four categories really of, of income inside of a, a corporation. And it's really important for us to, to understand this because we are going to talk a little bit about federal income tax. And so it really depends on the type of income earned. Let's look at active uh, income for, for a moment. So active income uh, businesses, uh, active business income is uh, usually looked at up to that small business um, limit. So that 500,000 uh, federal limit. Uh, passive investment, uh, passive income, on the other hand, uh, is aggregate investment income. So things like rent, royalties, interest, uh, dividend income, uh, it's often referred to as portfolio dividends. Um, so that's going to be an important part of this discussion as well. There is a substantial difference between the taxation of active and passive income inside of a corporation, as I've mentioned before. Uh, I know I did mention that in 2019, January, there was a change to how that active income uh, and passive income affect each other um, and how that really does impact the business owner from a taxation perspective. Um, so uh, again, as I said, we will talk about the passive income a little bit later on in the presentation for you. We also need to consider that there are capital gains tax. So, um, you know, when we're looking at uh, income inside of the corporation and we're looking at diversifying some of those assets, we need to remember that there's capital gains tax when part or all of the corporation's investment portfolio is liquidated. So when, um, when we're looking to do some of these solutions, we need to be mindful that there is some corporate potential uh, capital uh, gains tax. There is, to, to recuperate some of that, of course, um, the corporation paying a dividend would be, um, they'd be able to recuperate some of that tax uh, through that RDTOH. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, passive income has become a really, really big discussion now uh, with advisors, with your clients. Um, and one of the things that Desjardins has created is a passive income, uh, passive investment income impact calculator say that quickly a few times, our PIC tool. So for short, we just call it our PIC tool. The passive income tool will actually allow you to work with your client, understand what their active income is, what their passive income is, what their portfolio looks like, and what does their tax uh, implication look like over the next five, 10, 15 years? Uh, do, do they have a scenario where you need to look at diversifying some of those assets inside that corporation? Um, and, and again, that's where the CWIP will come in and that's where we can look at um, our, our par to help alleviate that issue for the business owner. On top of that, you see we have uh, another practice tip for you. So we have another uh, concept team called EPIC, Essential Passive Income Concept. Uh, and this is a team that's been developed by Desjardins. Uh, and what they will do is they'll assess the potential effects of passive income uh, on a corporation. And so um, I know a, a lot of us have a lot of experience working with business owners and can produce uh, different solutions for them in order to combat some of these uh, issues. But the EPIC team will look at different scenarios for you, perhaps looking at even things like IPPs, um, guaranteed investments, things like that for, for your, your business owner. So it's sort of a secondary look, uh, and I, I sort of refer to it as a business owner financial planning. So we do have that secondary team available to help you with your business owner planning. Okay. So we've looked at some of the, the issues that the business owner can have. And if we look at some of the passive income issues and perhaps, um, you know, estate transition issues, the, the Solution really does lie in diversifying the corporation's investments. Uh, really, we're looking at reallocating some of that traditional taxable investment to an exempt corporate um, life insurance policy. So we're just looking really to, to re reallocate some of those um, assets within the corporation. The Corporate Wealth Escalator Plan uh, repositions your surplus profits, so some of the cash flows 
to, into an exempt life insurance policy. The policy provides life insurance protection and an investment account that allows for tax exempt growth, okay, which is very important. Um, <clears throat> when the insured dies, of course, the corporation receives the benefit from the life insurance policy tax free, plus a credit to its capital dividend account under the current tax laws. So, of course, you know, uh, laws, uh, of course, can change. Capital dividends uh, then are paid out to your estate tax free. So this strategy, the strategy maximizes the transfer of assets that you've built up inside your corporation. And that's really what you're trying to do uh, for your client here is to help them with that, that movement and transference of money. If your clients have surplus cash or retained earnings invested inside their corporation, uh, they have a desire to leave assets to the heirs and you're concerned about the erosion, um, of corporate assets, and, and that's what they're looking for as well. This actually is a very good solution. This might be the right solution for them. So how does the strategy work during a lifetime? So during the client's lifetime, corporation can use some or all of its passive assets or income to pay the premiums for a permanent life insurance policy. So as we said, uh, typically we're looking at using a PAR policy for something like this. Um, it can reduce the tax the corporation pays each year on the growth of that those fixed income uh, investments. So it can help to reduce that the tax that's, that's paid on that passive income, but also that tax that may potentially be paid on the active business income um, uh, unintentionally. Uh, the increase in the cash value of the policy is again, tax advantaged, um, but again, within the limits of, of the, the tax laws. How does the strategy uh, work on death? So, so how does it work at the end of the day? Uh, what's the final the planning solution? So during a lifetime, corporation can use some or all of its passive assets uh, or income to pay the premiums, as we said, for a permanent life insurance policy. This can reduce the tax that the corporation pays each year on the growth of fixed incomes, right? This is, this is um, really what we're trying to do is alleviate some of that tax burden along the way um, with the tax sheltered growth as opposed to the open market um, passive investment income that you're going to see inside your corporation. So as you see here, a larger after-tax estate value typically results when compared to using taxable investments owned by the company. So now I know Eris is going to go through a case study for us, um, and essentially one of the key things to, to be looking at here is to understand that, um, you know, how do we show our client, the business owner, uh, the benefit of taking however much money that they, they take every month or every year that they invest into their business. Instead, what does that look like if you invested into a life policy? How does that affect you from both an estate planning perspective and also from a tax perspective? Okay, so what is the net estate value? Let's take a look at what this looks like for the client. So on death, the death benefit is paid to the designated beneficiary. So in this case, it's a corporation. The de death benefit is tax-free, it's life insurance. The proceeds from the death benefit in excess of the policy's adjusted cost base are credited to the company's notional capital dividend account. So it goes to the CDA. The company then can pay a tax-free capital dividend to the shareholder's estate, okay? Um, these tax-free dividends can provide money to address succession issues, taxation issues. That's, and again, this is something we discussed at the beginning. So really what is the end result? It's per permanent life insurance typically increases the amount of money available upon death, um, both uh, for, for the shareholder, for the, the, um, for the corporation. So as I said, Eris is going to, uh, to lead us through a case study. And, and what, I, what I hope we can remember when we're looking at this, uh, this case study is that um, we've done a business needs analysis. So we wanna make sure that we've done a full needs analysis for the business that you've determined the amount of insurance that the client needs, that the business needs. So we're not just looking particularly at what the client needs, we wanna make sure we know what the business needs as well from that perspective. Um, make sure that you uh, talk to your clients that they understand it does involve purchasing life insurance. Uh, sometimes clients don't realize that there is an underwriting process to it from a health perspective. So let's make sure that they understand that that, that is an element there. Uh, and last, make sure you work with your clients to determine uh, what portion of their corporate uh, uh, taxable surplus that they should transfer into the policy. So how much of that, um, that money do they still need to leave inside their corporation for potential growth and how much can they use for the solution? So as I said, I keep teasing you with that case study. We're at that point now where Eris is going to uh, 
going to lead us through that. Awesome. Thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, just so you guys know, both Tara and I are located in Ontario. Uh, we have, of course, wholesalers uh, supporting, uh, you know, advisors coast to coast if you're outside of uh, Ontario. Uh, I generally support the northern part of the GTA in Ontario as well, uh, with Tara covering Toronto and the downtown core, just in case uh, you're, uh, you're curious uh, where we're based. Uh, but um, uh, thanks to our great introduction and I find that case studies are always great and we're going to get into uh, a quick case study now the great thing about the CWEP concept and that's all our concepts for that matter is they're available right through our web based software so you don't have to download anything to your computers. Um, if you're new to Desjardins even if you're not contracted with us yet, we can email you a link you click on a link you have access to all our quotes all our concepts, uh, including CWEP so. Um, uh, you know, that's, uh, we have a number of business concepts as well. So this is one. Uh, we also have a very unique um, industry leading CI concept for business owners. So, um, you know, it's not just CWEP, you know, have a look at our software, take a look at the, uh, the strategies tab, and I'll show you what that looks like on a few screens. But um, here we're looking at a 45 year old male, pretty self-explanatory, Jason Lee. Um, some of you might be thinking, well, I don't really work in the medical market. Don't worry so much about the industry. Um, you know this concept is uh, transferable uh, to uh, you know other uh, industries, enterprises, etc. Um, the key thing is really about the fit. So we've got you know we've got a client who's been in practice for some time. Um, you know he's he's obviously got some strong earnings. Uh, his business is mature, and uh, we wanted to focus the concept on those types of clients. Of course, clients who are earlier in their business life cycle you know, may gravitate towards things like term um, because it meets the budget and it's obviously convertible. Um, we also in our discovery process, not only identify the needs of the business, but we, we, um, we you know, we, we figure out that uh, Jason's married, he's got one kid. So the, the maximizing estate is, is an important part of, of his planning, right? And it's both his personal and corporate planning as well. So on the, the next uh, slide, so during, you know, during our, our uh, discovery process, our, our needs analysis, uh, we identify that um, uh, Jason got some you know, pretty significant holdings in, in his holding company. So you're going to come across um, uh, business owners like this. A large segment of business owners are holding cash in their corporation um, and, and, you know, what's called retained earnings or just money in their business that's left over. Um, and, and here we identify that, you know, we've got about $600,000 in the investment portfolio in a holding company. Not all clients are going to have a hold co. Um, it really depends on the level of tax advice they've gotten. Um, I've, you know, been met with business owners who have a very established, very successful businesses and just haven't done that level of planning with their accountant. You can still apply the same concept to uh, an operating company structure. The hold co offers some nice flexibility for a business owner, but it's not uh, not a requirement by any means. Um, okay, back to uh, back to the hold co for a second. Um, you know, we 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 talked to uh, Jason. We realized he's got six hundred thousand dollars of investments. Um, uh, you know, the challenging part for us is really establishing that need, right? Establishing. Getting the details on the business is, I feel, one of the most challenging parts as an advisor. Business owners are short on time. Um, you know, what do you have? Um, um, and, and typically, the last thing they want to do is talk about an insurance policy. So the more we can dig down, um, um, there are, there's often misconceptions about the value of insurance. They look at it as a cost, maybe not as an asset initially. So the more we can dig down into the needs of Jason's business, the hold co., what he's doing, how much he has in there, what his plans are, um, uh, the better prepared we are to, to, to approach him with a concept, which may be this, this, this CWEP. Uh, um, and we have a great business needs analysis tool. So if you're new to the business market, or even if you've been in the business market for a long time, uh, you know, feel free to shoot Tara and I an email. Uh, we can send you a copy of that needs analysis. It really helps identify not only opportunities for this, but critical illness, you know, key person, it really gives you a good snapshot and understanding of uh, that, uh, that particular business we're, um, we're working on. So, um, you know, the, the $600 investment portfolio, right, big number, right? You know, do we need a policy that's that big, you know, in terms of premium? Obviously not, you know, the, the opportunity with PAR is to diversify 
um, you know, cover the, the, the permanent insurance need, but also to diversify that portfolio. And uh, the best way to do it, we can do that with an illustration, but the best way to do it is with a concept to really show value on a comparative basis. So back to the in insurance need, you know, Tara touched on um, uh, the, uh, you know, some of the needs and some of the challenges of business owners uh, today. One thing you may want to highlight, and if you're new to the business market, you might want to write this down, is, you know, when Jason's invested in the market, he's got $600,000 and it, it's in a portfolio, right? What that portfolio composition looks like, we don't have to be as experts at, at that, but we need to have a general understanding of what he's doing. Is he buying real estate? Is he, is he in rental properties? Is he in rental properties plus part of that money in the market? You know, what's the rate of return he's getting or expecting, right? That's all going to really help us build this concept report and help it fit what he's looking for. Um, uh, so we want to explore that $600,000. And, and part of it might be earmarked for expansion, reinvest in the business, you know, keep the lights on. Part of it might be for a new venture he's planning, or the whole thing might be in cash or, or invested in, this, in, in mutual funds. So digging down and understanding his current investment strategy is really going to help us position um, uh, you know, par uh, along with that as a complement to what he's already doing. Um, and of course, it's about the, the need, right? And, and so we've got to also identify what sort of permanent need uh, Jason has. And the great thing about par is we all know that death benefit grows as does the cash value. So it's going to keep up uh, with, uh, with his needs longer term. Okay, so uh, touched a bit on par. Uh, we're going to show you a quote and what it looks like on our software. So here we're talking about a 20 pay estate enhancer. Uh, we do have a great 10 pay at Desjardins as well. That's especially competitive. 20 pay met the budget, uh, met the needs. Uh, Jason's pretty young. We selected paid up additions, you know, the most popular dividend option on par uh, because that's going to provide that growth we're really looking for uh, longer term. Uh, we're covering, you know, Jason's. Uh, life, uh, but the owner and the beneficiary on the policy are the hold co. That's where the money is. Um, that's where we want the policy to be. Ideally, it's creditor protected in there, um, but gives them a, long, a lot of long-term planning uh, opportunities and coverage amount of, um, of uh, $1 million, which would be the initial uh, death benefit. Now, our current uh, PAR uh, dividend scale interest rate is 575. Um, and, and uh, you know, definitely have a look at our PAR if you're new to uh, the PAR space or if you're not familiar with Desjardins. Uh, we have very strong guarantees, um, a very consistent dividend scale interest rate uh, compared to, uh, you know, many of our peers uh, in terms of the long-term uh, volatility of that dividend scale interest rate and also very stable values, uh, not only at a specific stage in the contract, not the first 10 years or the last 10 years of, of life expectancy. It's, it's very steady throughout. And, and we feel that's one of the strong, uh, strong points in our PAR contract is we often uh, offer a great margin of safety right through, um, you know, the initial, uh, the initial years and, and right through to life expectancy as well. So why, why are we using the Estate Enhancer product? Uh, we have two products at Desjardins. We have our accelerated growth and our estate enhancer. And one of the questions that Tara and I often get is, hey, which product should I look at? And, and so it depends on the motivation of the client, right? And their timeline. Most of the time, it's the estate enhancer because we're looking further out. We're, we're looking out 20 years, 30 years, 40 years later, and we're looking at maximizing values. But if your client is looking at the short term, you know, maybe a cash borrowing strategy, they, they want to maximize early year cash value. We could look at, acceler at accelerated growth. Most cases, we're quoting a state and answer. We want the increased long-term coverage. Um, we want that tax preferred growth. Um, and of course, the tax benefits uh, on death and diversification that's tied into, uh, into PAR. Um, you know, even though we're not talking about income on this particular concept, it's always great to highlight, especially with business owners, that you can get money if you need it, right? This isn't just an asset that's there for, you know, your beneficiaries for your estate. You know, if you run into corporate challenges and you don't want to or cannot get lending via a traditional bank because you've had a bad year or two in the business, you can get access to 
cash, uh, uh, borrow against your policy, uh, not from it, but you borrow against those values and, and uh, at some very low rates with no repayment required using a collateral loan. We also have other options, right? Policy loans, uh, surrendering. So that flexibility, again, not something we're, we're presenting in the concept, but just highlighting that is, is, um, uh, is a great feature. Uh, and business owners do like uh, thinking that they, or they may, if they, if they need money, they can get their hands on it, uh, you know, during that contract life. So this is what the, uh, our quote software looks like. So um, I'll go through this relatively quickly, how we would quote this on our software. It's all web-based. So we start off with the client tab. We put Jason in there. We got his date of birth. So this will take you a minute if that. We got the name of his holding company. And what's important there is we've indicated the hold co is the policy owner, right? Jason is just the insured. Not only is it the policy owner, it's the payer. That's where the $600,000 is. We know there's some liquid cash there. And uh, it's also the beneficiary. So that's how you'd set it up. Then we go to our uh, next screen, which uh, is the products tab. We enter in the million dollar need. We enter in the 20 pay schedule, uh, estate enhancer product, paid up additions, and we get our, our, our premium. Now, of course, if we pay annually, it's cheaper than monthly. If you took that monthly amount and multiplied it by 12, it'd be significantly over 32,000. So there's a cost advantage of paying annual. And if the case were under 10 grand a year, we could use a credit card, not only for year one, but every single year of that contract. So that's a nice feature at Desjardins 4K, any case, Life CI under uh, 10,000. Okay, so we've got, uh, we've got it all plugged in the software, right? Took us a minute or two, if that. And now we wanna look at this concept report. Um, now, most advisors will say, I'm gonna run the report, quote, you know, run the quote and go see Jason. Um, um, and, and those values are all accurate on the illustration, but what they're missing is that comparison piece, that, that tool, that this concept report that's going to relate what we're showing them on par to what Jason is investing in right at the moment. So let's look at the uh, concept report. And how do we get there? Tara and I can run these for you uh, if you're new to it, but you click on the strategies tab, takes you an extra minute or two. Um, you load up the concept you select. We have a long list of different concepts available. In this case, we click on the corporate wealth escalator plan, PAR, hit export. We get a, a, a document and we can input some stuff. So that discovery process is really important because right here, we can see the tools asking us, what are we comparing it to? So we need to have an understanding of what Jason's, or I should say, the, the hold co is invested in and what sort of rate of return expectations um, um, he has on this money. So, you know, in this case, you can see it's a pretty simple sort of balanced approach, might be balanced mutual funds, you know, 40% in interest, which is typically bonds, 60% split between dividends and capital gains. So a real balanced approach and, you know, relatively conservative rate of return um, that most uh, most Canadians, most investors would follow, um, who are prudent and 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 uh, looking for some you know strong risk adjusted returns. So that's more of the balanced fund approach. If your client is generating, if they're pure equity, uh, their go go growth, um, you know we could strictly put hundred percent in capital gains, tie in a rate of return there, and do the comparison. Uh, the next box you you can change. You don't have to. Is the dividend scale. So you can change it to reduce to show more conservative par uh, values. You can run both, right? You run two scenarios and show your client, here is the reduced dividend scale. Um, the next part you may wanna adjust up to you is the tax information. We have the default rates in there. Um, and again, I, I don't recall if I mentioned this, but you know, one thing you probably wanna emphasize with, uh, with, with Jason is you know, all that money that you're invested in, that, that balanced mutual fund that's generating, I don't know, roughly five, you know, four and a half, five percent gross, it's considered passive income. What does that mean, right? Passive active, you know, it's, it's a term, but it, it means you are paying, Jason, on your hold co growth, uh, on, on that investment portfolio, you're paying 50% tax. It's like 50.17 in Ontario, it's mentioned there. Um, very high in every other province as well. So on dollar one in your portfolio, or if you're renting property uh, and collecting rental income, half of it's gone. 
So let's do the net after tax. You're grossing four and a half. You're really at two and a quarter. Um, um, so that might um, allow you to create some interest in an alternative, which is par, um, that with paid up additions is not taxable. There's no T-slips generated year over year. And there's some other tax rates here you can, um, you can play with or just leave them at default and uh, run your PDF. So this is the nice report we get. Uh, as you probably noticed, we didn't type in anything about that alternative investment portfolio other than the rate of return. So what the report's going to do, this is the cover page. It's, it's going to highlight everything you put in the quote. It's going to just give us a nice summary page, make sure everything's right. Yep, good. 45-year-old uh, male. We've got the returns. We've got the tax rates. We've got the premium in there. And now it gives us an awesome summary page. I think this would be the, the winning slide, if I'm going to say, on our uh, corporate wealth escalator plan. It says, here are, here's the scenario. You put in a total over the course of 20 years of $645,600 invested in your PAR. We you call it premium, but it's an investment. And alternatively, you put that same dollar amount into your current investment portfolio. So we're creating some credibility because we're actually showing him net net what that value would be in his, his current investments, uh, utilizing his current investment strategy. Then we go right to the summary, you know, benefits first, we're showing him that uh, net net the estate value on the wealth escalator plan using whole life at age 82 life expectancy here on our software is $2.6 million. Conversely, the investment portfolio um, is going to provide 996269 to the estate. Day and night, right? It's, it's, we're not 3% off here. It's a significant difference, which is highlighted. And then it breaks it down even further and said, so here's the cost per dollar um, uh, for the strategy. So really good summary page that highlights the investment side by side with what Jason's doing in his hold co right now, along with uh, along with the par. Now you may be thinking, why are these values so different, right? We've got an investment on the one hand and we've got par on the other. Is par really growing that, you know, is, is it really superior from a growth standpoint? Most of it has to do with tax, right? A lot of it is tax and, and we can dig down a little deeper um, and we probably will need to on a case this size with a, a client like Jason, who you know may run this by his accountant at some point as well. So what's uh, what's happening is with the life insurance strategy, we're able to pay out, as you can see on the right, a significant amount um, through the capital dividend account. Um, um, that's that's one of the unique features of life insurance that's not available uh, on. Um, the, the Hold Coast traditional investment. So there's a, a huge tax bill um, that would be tied into that when we're trying to transfer that to, uh, to the estate. Um, and those values are all summarized here in a number of different ways um, to kind of educate uh, Jason on, on uh, you know, how we came up with these figures and, and you know, why the strategy is something he should uh, um, consider. So if we look at the, the next page of the report, you know, nice visual slide. Um, unfortunately, I'm not seeing the bottom of it, but the green, <laughs> the green you can see is the um, uh, the wealth escalator plan, and the gray uh, is the taxable investment. Um, the other reason that we're seeing such superior value on the uh, insurance plan um, is because we're we're not being taxed every year, right? In on in in uh, when we ran those comparisons and we put those numbers in, that's that's triggering tax every year. Interest income has to be declared, um, as does any distribution. So if you're in a mutual fund, they're distributing income once a year, paying that high rate of tax at 50%. And uh, that continues year over year, where the PAR benefits from the, the compounding uh, tax-free within the policy. So that's also part of uh, the reason you see such superior values here. Um, again, for those clients who are going to get really granular, uh, we've got it all tabled in that numerical format. So they can send this to their accountant. Their accountant would likely look at this versus the previous summary slides and really want to drill down. Um, now, we're talking a lot about investments and, you know, values and comparisons on numbers. But, you know, we have to remember this is a life insurance product early on in the schedule. Um, 
you know, we've got a million dollars worth of coverage and, you know, investing 32 odd thousand dollars in an investment, you know, if, if Jason were to pass away early, would really not provide anywhere near what the life insurance policy would. But um, so there's obviously that short term benefit uh, with respect to the after tax return uh, in, in year one, year two, year three and, and so forth. It's highlighted here, um, but also uh, we can emphasize the strength uh, long term. And the adjusted cost base is mentioned there. That can be um, that might be something that can, the accountant wants to see um, to see how did we get these figures, how did we come up with the um, um, the value, and 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 um, you know what sort of math is behind it. So this will give us a lot of credibility um, if that accountant's involved in reviewing this as a possible option for uh, for Jason's uh, hold co. So great, you know, simple report but detailed enough to. Uh, to really get us uh, into a, a, a great discussion with uh, uh, with uh, with Jason, um, and I, li I like the report because again, it, it just gives it gives the par policy context. You know, we're not trying to just show them a par policy um, on its own and tell them it's a good investment. We're going to actually show you side by side with what you're already doing, and of course, all that money is great because it allows Jason to diversify some of the portfolio. Um, uh, not only that, um, from a diverse investment diversification standpoint, maximize and, and create a, a larger estate, uh, which he likely would want to pass on to his spouse and, uh, and his child. So um, that's really just a quick case study. Um, you know, we can apply it again to any industry. It doesn't have to be a $32,000 premium. It could be twice that or, or half that. Um, you know, the values will be relatively the same because of that strong opportunity to, you know, flow proceeds through the capital dividend account and the tax advantage of not getting hit with that passive income tax on your investments or rental income every year. That's um, we can completely avoid by using a par policy. I think that's a great, great point that you're making with um, using that specifically in combination with the passive income discussion, because, uh, you know, what we find as RSDs working with advisors and their clients, the client in a lot of cases, and I'd like to say more than 70% of the time, they say, how come I didn't know? about mm -hmm. these changes, you know, how mm -hmm. come I didn't know how it was going to be affecting me even this year or next year or two or three years down the road. And so because it is still a fairly new discussion, um, having that pick tool, that passive income calculator that we have available as well, is fantastic to tie in with this. Um, you know, it, it really gives you a lot of strength when you're talking to the, the client and saying, hey, listen, I have this, this overall plan um, and it's going to help yeah. you in a number of ways, right? Taxation, yeah. life insurance and, and whatnot. Yeah. And I, and I think it, you can, you can sort of tee that ball up nicely because, you know, again, we're pro, we're not approaching it from the op the, the um, uh, we're not strictly talking about life insurance, right? We're not strictly talking about protection. We're really talking about diversifying your investment pool and creating more value, right? And and we got to show them how we're going to do that. And and the pick calculator is great because it's it's product agnostic. We're not talking about a specific product at all. And we're just saying, what's your income? What are you invested in? Here's how much you're losing on additional tax, and and you know this is one solution. There are others as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Sarah. Great point um, to to maybe start off with that the uh, pick calculator to uh, highlight the passive income um, uh, challenge that you know someone like Jason might be uh, uh, might be experiencing, and likely is given given his you know six hundred thousand dollars in 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 a hold co. Uh, you know, he's paying top marginal tax rates. And even if he's generating a reasonable rate of return, those are still pretty big numbers. So I think, uh, I think we have a few uh, summary slides. Uh, and I don't know if I've just skipped uh, past one. But again, um, you know, as Eris said, you know, using the, the corporate wealth escalator plan, you know, you're really going to show them this, this uh, benefit to the tax deferred growth. Uh, as, as Eris said, that, that huge benefit, that huge difference uh, between the investable assets and life insurance, you know, where does that, where, where is that um, difference? And that's really in the, the taxation. And so, as you see here, um, it, it looks like about 165% uh, greater net estate value. So, um, you know, for, for this particular client, you know, if that's what he's looking to achieve, um, 
plus that the, the tax savings along the way is, is pretty fantastic. Um, so again, I, I think, uh, Iris, you've covered all of these, you know, why use this tool, right? Um, it, it, it uh, there are so many different benefits to it. So we don't have to sort of rehash that again, I don't think. Um, I do see we had a few, uh, a, a question come up and I wasn't able to access. Where can I find the business needs analysis? Thank you so much for asking that question. If you haven't seen our business needs analysis, it is fantastic. Uh, and not just because I work here. Uh, <laughs> it's 10 pages, 10 pages long. It sounds like a lot, but actually, um, uh, if you, if I can, oh, I will go back one slide. If you um, go onto our illustration software, and in fact, we are happy to send this to you after the presentation, if you wanna email myself or Iris, uh, so we know who to send it to, that's great. But it is actually located directly on our illustration software. If you go into, um, I, I don't know if it's in the PAR illustration, but it's certainly in the critical illness for business owners um, uh, section, product section in there. And you'll see on the right hand side, just above where it says the premium and refresh, it'll say BNA. Uh, so it's right there. Mm -hmm. What I like about it specifically is that as you start to enter information, it's actually a fillable PDF. Um, it'll ask you about, you know, how many shareholders, what's the percentage of ownership? Is there a plan to expand your business? Are you looking to, um, to buy another business? Are you looking to perhaps, are you in those succession years? Are you looking to retire soon? So it really helps you to walk through that conversation with the client in terms of all the information that you're going to want to know. So uh, it sort of naturally does that for you. But at the end of the, um, the b &A, it asks you for things like how much life insurance do they have in place already? Uh, what are the debts? What are the, the, the debts that the corporation is on the hook for? Uh, and it actually adds it all up and it will add, it, add uh, different needs for CI, for life insurance. It asks about disability. Is there a disability need in there? So it's not just sort of a, a one, one product, one trick BNA. Um, it really is a fantastic document to, that really a, a lot of advisors we talk to say, I don't really know how to start the conversation with my business owner client. Mm -hmm. Do I start mm -hmm. with life insurance? Do I start with uh, health insurance? <laughs> Do I start with the financial side of, you know, here's some tax benefits to it. Uh, so using that BNA will actually help to walk you through that whole conversation. Uh, and once you can get to that point where you're asking for things like a financial statement, financial statement will tell you an incredible amount of information. Um, so what we'll do is uh, I see uh, we, we have the name of, of uh, someone who's asked for this. That's fine. We're happy to go ahead and, and uh, I'll email you that BNA after the presentation. Do we have any other questions as we're sort of wrapping up, I think? Eris, I don't know if we, I don't think we missed anything. No, I think, I think we covered off uh, pretty much everything on the, the uh, CWEP and, and um, yeah, any questions, guys, if you need our software, uh, please reach out. We can get you the software. Uh, we can help you with quotes. And uh, if you're, uh, haven't had a look at uh, Desjardins PAR, um, you know, and you're working on any cases, uh, please, uh, uh, shoot us a note we'd be happy to run any comparisons for you uh, both on illustrations and concepts and um, look forward to uh, to partnering with you in your practice yeah quick tip um, you you don't need a first piece of business to access our software it is available to you um, right now so if you are interested in going in to see what do we have available to look at our illustration tool we absolutely do have a guest access for you um, and we can we can get you sorted out if you want to contact your rsd thanks everyone for joining and uh, we'll stay on for a couple minutes in case there's other questions that come through um, but uh, yeah I, I agree with you tara for those of you who are still with us uh, that, that business needs analysis tool is is just fantastic because you know, there's so many opportunities you can identify there. And I've been guilty of it. And I think a lot of advisors have as we go out for a great conversation with a business owner we may have a relationship with. And, um, you know, we get a little bit, but we don't have enough. We come back to the table and we're like, well, how do I really evaluate that need? I know he's got a ton of money in the corporation, he or she. Um, I don't know if it's a hold co. I'm kind of missing some vital information to really put a proposal together. And that BNA is a great, uh, a great reference piece to have with you. And it's professional, you know, you build some credibility asking these great questions along the way and, and getting a better picture of what they're doing. 
uh, and, and what their goals are. The big one that I find that, that gets missed in that conversation too, Eris, good point is, are there successors? Is there a plan to, to leave yeah. the business? Yeah. Or are you going to sell the business? What does that look like? And so yeah. for some business owners, they're like, absolutely not. I'm selling. I'm out. There's no, there's no succession to anyone, children, other, that's it. I'm out. Uh, and so it's a really important thing to thing to find out. And uh, it, it's a difficult, you know, situation to plan if we don't have all those, uh, all those questions. So, yeah. Good yeah point. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I'm checking the chat. No more questions uh, so far. We still have a few people logged in. Yeah, I'll stay on just for a little bit. And yeah. So thanks for your feedback, any everyone. Um, I will maybe post our contact information. I'll just do if I can get the chat box up. I'll type in our contact uh, information, both Tara's and mine. And of course, the IDC team will have it. If you're, um, you know, don't have a pen handy, or if you're on the road or something. Uh, you know, feel free to reach out to your IDC uh, business development team and they'll be able to pass on our contact information as well. Uh, but maybe I'll try to post it in the chat, um, you know, or direct cell numbers, mobiles and, and, and email addresses. Um, is... Oh, perfect. Thanks, Tara. Paris, I hit enter without putting, it's at DFS. Don't well, it's too many letters on my last name, so I... <laughs> completely understandable. So, Chris Donulu <laughs> at DFS. You spelled it right. I mean, so yeah. That's a deserve a prize. Well, I have that. some family that are Greek. So uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Thanks everyone for joining us. And I uh, hope you had a great, uh, you know, IDC University day. And uh, hopefully um, this was a value.